Remember, it would go that way first. Two, three, four. If you look at the numbers, they're accelerating. One, two, three, four. Decelerate. Never got to the diodes, did it? And you know what, if I start it about there, I don't know if it'll get to the diodes or not. Could you adjust it so you don't even need the diodes? Yeah. More or less, yeah. But wouldn't the diode be a safety if you really had an end of track? You bet. Diodes very important. Is that cool? I mean, that... How hard is that? Now, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. You cannot any longer use the remote control. You'd have to write some additional code to get it to accelerate and decelerate and change speed and do all that sort of stuff. But that's a complete controller, and that's, that's what's running it, guys. This little bitty board here, and I did throw an LED in there to tell you if the, uh, the relay's been thrown or not. But that's running the whole thing. And this is not even warm. It's cold as a stone. And that's probably drawing, oh, well, how, many, how much is this drawing? Can you tell me? 24.3. Yeah, it's drawing half an amp or a little bit less. This, by the way, is one of my tips. We'll get to that in a minute. If you don't have one of these, you need one. Okay, I'm going to cost you a lot of money today. All right, any questions? Okay, let's continue. Actually, I do have one. Go for it. With what we have right now, no. This is pretty stupid. Yeah, it's just doing a basic point-to-point. -point. And I have nothing against the guys that are selling point-to-point -point controllers over there, but isn't this a lot more fun? Hey, Fred, I built this thing. You know, that's the power of it right there. You get to say you did it, and if you want to change it, you can go back and learn more stuff and figure out how to do more with it. That's what excites me. Okay. You do things like program. For instance, station stop. stop. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or could I put a station stop in? Could I say accelerate, pause two, decelerate, but don't toggle the relay, pause two more, and then accelerate again? So what would happen? Zhong, stop. Zhong, stop. Reverse, stop. And could I have it doing only one direction? Um, yeah. That station stop, turn the bell, blow the yeah. whistle before you start. Now the whistle would not come. The whistle would not come from the train, the whistle would come from the side. But if you put this in the train, which you could do, which is what I did with the trolley, then you could do that. How could you control the station? It'd be based on time. With this, it would be based on time. Could you put a reed switch where you wanted it to stop and run a wire back to this and say if pin number seven is hit? Yes, you could do that and it would stop very precisely. All those things are possible. And once you start developing the tools, you start to understand how this works. It's not that hard. But you could do, can you do a set like, for instance, if you want to put a read switch in, can you command it to decelerate slowly instead of suddenly stop? You could say if it hits a reset, or a read switch, slow down slowly. Yeah, you could have a different deceleration routine. You could have decel and decel so too. To a sudden stop and gradually yeah, oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Your imagination is the limit. Okay. How many things that we only have from 1490? 15 pins you can control. How many do you need? I'm using three. But you could connect all the read switches to one pin. Then you're using four. You still have like 10 left. But how does it know what to do if you got multiple read switches connected. It has to be the same routine each time. Exactly. If you want a different routine, you have to use different pins. How many input pins? How many input pins? Uh, there are 15 pins that you can use, and I believe all but one can be used as an output, and I think all of them can be used as inputs. Very flexible. Very flexible. Could you add random elements to the speed and to the time? Absolutely. Speed, you could, you could say, Wait eight seconds one time, but the next time pick a random number between one and eight and stop. Because there's a random function built into it. Lots of neat stuff. Okay, let's continue. How's that for the beginning of a, of a slide? 
When you work with electronics, do you know what's going on in all this stuff? Can you look at a microcontroller and tell what's going on? Not very well. You are blind. What is the first and foremost piece of equipment that you need to figure out what's going on with anything electrical? You need a meter. Oh, do I have a picture? A meter. And there is absolutely no excuse for not having one. This is from our buddies at Harbor Freight. The highest price I've ever seen them charge for this is about eight bucks. They're frequently on sale for $1.99 and I've seen them free if you buy something else for 20 bucks. This is, I shouldn't say this is cheap, this is inexpensive. These are very good meters. I put these up against a $400 fluke and you get the same numbers. And if you step on it, you go out and buy another one. As a matter of fact, if you get two of them, you put them on a board side by side and it's very easy to wire these so one of them gives you volts and the other one gives you amps at the same time. Just like that. And if you go to trainelectronics.com you'll see a whole list of articles. There's an article that says Harbor Freight Voltmeter Modification. I use this all the time. I just happen to plug my power in this end, I put the train on this end, I can look at the display and see oh it's getting 14 volts and it's drawing 2 amps. What do I have in this thing? Well, the piece of board was probably just as expensive as the meters. I've got a buddy that has about six of these because he has six loops on his train. There's one of these on each loop. He can tell the health of his trains. He knows if he's got a bad axle and the train's drawing two and a half amps, it normally draws two. There's something wrong. No excuse for being blind when it comes to looking at stuff like this. Speaking of Harbor Freight things, how many of you have one of these? Okay, you can go to Micromart and you can buy a torch for about 30 bucks. You can go to a local hardware store and spend 50. It's got a piezo igniter, uses butane. I use this all the time when I'm doing brass tubing. It's got a little base so it stands up. This one's got to be four or five years old. There's nothing to it, but it works, and it works reliably. Okay, picture of that. Typically less than 10 bucks. I've seen them on sale for five. All right, questions up to that point? I must have done everything right. There's no questions. Okay, let's talk about LEDs for a minute. Shall we shut him off or are we going to let him go? I'm going to shut him off. Off, okay. I talk about this every time that I do a, a, a seminar. LEDs are current driven devices. Incandescent bulbs are voltage driven devices. What does that mean? You can't feed an LED any old voltage that you want and any old amount of current. You'll kill it. If you don't limit the current, they'll burn themselves up. Now, how do you do that? Most people put a current limiting resistor, typically 500 to 1,000 ohms, in series with one of the leads, and then you can feed it 12 volts and it's perfectly happy. There are also new integrated circuits that automatically limit the current going to LEDs to 20 milliamps, which is typically what most LEDs draw. Why do I bring this up? I am now up to about, I don't know, seven or eight articles on LEDs on my webpage. Again, I'm not trying to sell anything, I'm just trying to teach you about LEDs. If you go to my webpage, these are all LED related articles. Simple current, uh, constant brightness LED, and then there are four kind of introductory stories about it. This talks about a better constant brightness LED, it talks about the new integrated circuits that automatically limit the amount of current going into an LED. Then talks about ditch lights and Mars lights and lighthouse beacons and all kinds of neat stuff. But I'm using this, that's again trainelectronics.com. This is the one I want to talk about next. That's part of my LED, it's my newest LED experience. This whole project, it's, it's weird how stuff starts. 
Um, I moderate a, uh, an electronics forum on large scale online, which means that whenever anybody asks a question, I get an email, and I feel guilty if I don't answer it, so I answer it. And, and a fellow wrote, I'm looking for a simple and cheap LED circuit for a single LED and for alternating flashing LEDs, an onboard circuit possibly to operate off of 5 volts DC. Okay. And I wrote back and I said, you can do it with a 555 timer and a couple capacitors, a couple resistors. And I started thinking, well, yeah, but let's go a little bit farther. 